The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman on this Monday, rainy Monday here in Boston. Uh, rainy day, but it is Monday the 10th of July, and we're looking at the Dow up 198 points at 33,933. The reason why I'm saying it in such a surprise fashion is not that it can't happen. Of course it can happen, because that nine-period moving average is still above the 14, but look how close it got. Let me just show you this here quickly. Uh, and I'm going to the, there it is. This is with just the 914 period moving average, green when it goes positive, pink when it goes negative. Um, look what happened here when it turned pink, and that was in May. It went all the way down, then it turned green, and then it was so close, around about the 26th of June, to turning down, and then what did it do? It turned up. But this M-shaped pattern is suggesting that there is some residual strength, but we are getting closer and closer to seeing it turn pink. Does it turn pink for a day as it did? Uh, where was it? Well, one day before oh, we saw that in the S&P, I think it was. Let me just go to the SPY. Yeah, just over there. And back in May, it turns pink for a day or two. Green, green, green. So this is still very positive. And the reason why, I got a question here about, oh, what is it? Uh, what's that question? Uh, Short-term buy or sell on the S&P, on the SPY. Uh, what is my outlook for the next four to six weeks? So my outlook is very mixed. We're trying to do buying. The only short we've got is a short on the on the semiconductors right now. And the only reason is, look at this SMH. It's still, if you're looking at this particular pattern, look, it's still green. The 9 period moving average over the 40, but it's getting closer and closer to turning pink. I don't know if it will. But so far, we've taken really nice gains in the very short term on the pop to the upside. And now we've locked in a gain no matter what happens. I hope that that can stay, stay that way. But the reason why I'm looking at this in such a, a diverse way is because even within sectors, you've got so many things going on. Friends, let me just show you something here. I'll finish this up um, by looking at the daily chart of the Dow. Look, the weekly chart is still holding very steady. Nothing great happening, but it's walking the line period moving average. The monthly chart is also walking the line period moving average. Nothing great is happening. Look at the S&P. Look at the difference in the chart patterns between almost all these indices. S&P made a peak D. Remember, the Chapman Way peak D is where other things can happen. You have an instant restart like you did here at the beginning of June. And you had your second. And remember, I say... The, the one lesson I've learned in the Chapman Way methodology that I've, I've, I've imported and really considered a very key component now of my notations is that whenever you get to a G, consider immediately whether it could be a G slash C, an alternate count that says you could pull back, but then you might make one more new high. That's the high that says start measuring vertically the, the degree of strength when it hits the height 4448.47 back on the 16th of September oh, September 16th of June and then what happened when it hit the high just under that on uh, around about the 28th or so of, of uh, June well the MACD deflected lower the stochastic was running. That's a good sign. The unbalance was running, but less less so than before. But look at the strength of the nine-period moving average. And that just says, don't mess around with this because it's holding very well. And the weekly chart is also extremely strong. It's starting to stall. Stall doesn't mean to say it has to crash. <coughs> Source is taking a breather. And the weekly chart leads us to think that the monthly chart in leg C has almost done the one-to-one -to, -one to the upside in Chapman Way falling axe formation. That's all very positive. So I'm not looking at this very negatively. I am looking at selective, uh, selectively uh, either pulling back or waiting for buy. Most of the time, we, we just want to add to long positions that have done extremely well and we've taken profits so on some of the positions and we want to put some of it back. And look at this. Here's the QQQ at 372.85, around about the 16th of June. 
pulls back, Jesus has seen that it almost made that D. So this just says, stuck in a range. You get the weekly chart, fabulous, but stuck in a range. We get the monthly chart. This is a leg A from the October low of 254. Here we are, 365. This is really nice action. So I didn't want to get, so the answer, uh, Kevin, is I'm only selectively short. And we've still got a, a pretty tight stop in that. We've taken, as I say, a very, very nice gain, um, uh, two, two small bits off. And within, within that context, all I can say is that um, I'm, I'm probably looking more to buy than to sell. And within the, the parameters that I give, uh, you know, we have taken off um, – in the let me just go to this uh, sock, sock. Yeah, so we've we, we have a little leeway now. That's really what I'm saying. So we've taken off. We got up to a twelve percent, seven percent, and the twelve percent gain, um, and that just just gives us leeway. And now I'm saying to the market, hey, show me what you've got. Look, Nvidia has been an absolute superb leader. But where did I type that? Let me type it over there. In Nvidia. One of the leaders, but it's stalling. It's down two. It was up three something. Now it's at down, only up two. It hasn't broken down, but it shows you. Look at the way the technicals are starting to weaken. But that nine is still strong above the fourteen. I've drawn in the rectangle here. I was completely wrong. I had said somewhere around here with that dreaded H that ran up to a new uh, high, uh, going to that peak F around about the sixteenth of uh, June. I said I'm pretty sure that we're going to be coming back, and if we can break the 398 level, we'll be very quickly going to the low that was made in that candle, the gap up candle of 366. It's at 422.60 60 points higher. It's holding fantastically. So I like to do this because of, of, of what gets sent to me in, in emails. Um, I like to show NVIDIA has this huge PE. GE is completely different. GE is rallying nicely today. And look at this, what I said, this pattern here, crawling, walking above the nine period exponential moving average, is getting closer and closer to it says the momentum to the upside is beginning to stall in the shorter term for General Electric. Two completely different things still making you money. Both of them making you money. It depends on how you want to invest. This is, for me, probably a longer term uh, outlook, General Electric, uh, aircraft engines, electric equipment, appliances, just a whole bunch of things. Um, this is very nice. Even today, it's up $1.28 at $109.55, up 1.19%. But look at the way this weekly, higher highs and higher lows. High just keeps doing it, like a little worm walking up the, 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 the limb of a tree. All right. So, meantime, back at the ranch, what I wanted to show you is, I had a couple of questions, and I'll get to that in a moment. Let me just show you the IWM. You see this cluster formation, it made the dread, the, the H pattern, H pattern now is trying to revert to a cup formation, and that's what we look at all the time in the markets. You're just fighting between a cup and, a, and an arch, a cup and an arch, or a V, or an inverted V, and it, it's how you walk the nine period moving average, as far as I'm concerned. That's really important, and here it is. IWM is still holding very well. So this is up at 1.42%. That is very nice relative strength compared to the others. Now I'm looking at the weekly chart and saying, finally, this is the fourth week of the digestive phase, and how it closes this week is going to be really important. Basil Chapman does at 2.15, Tiger finished this hour, and I think the, the sale might be ending today or maybe it ended last night. Tiger sale, check it out. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, we're back. I'm just finishing up the notation, the chat wave notation on this particular chart, C. It should still go to D, A, OK, A, B, C, D, E. Okay, so we're looking at, I'm going to go backwards. I swear was the one that was asked about, but I just saw in Tiger YouTube uh, that earlier on there was a question on, uh, cheers, Basil, I, I took a small position in GKOS, and for a while it didn't go anywhere, but it has a nice run-up recently. Do I add to it, or has it run its course? So I like it very much. I don't know what they do. Uh, let me just have a look here. What is it called? It's called... I always do the notations and everything, then I look at the price and then the name. Uh, Glauc Glaucos Company. Okay, let's see what Glaucos does. Uh, G, uh, G L A U K O S, it sounds like a foreign company. Co does. Founded in 1998. Oh, it's been around a long time. Oh, is an op ophthalmic. Uh, yeah, I am struggling to see the price. And what is it? Uh, to see the name. And what is it? It is an ophthalmic medical technology and pharmaceutical company developing and commercializing novel therapies for the treatment of glaucoma, corneal disorders, and retinal disease. Oh, big market there. But what we're looking at is, and absolutely, uh, we're looking at, uh, I'm going to say, so you just really want an analysis of whether you hold or stay, Ron. Yeah, so I, I, this is what I would do. First of all, you're talking about going sideways for a little while um, in a very frustrating arch formation. But look at it in terms of the dreaded H. It held the left side low after all that time. I'm mean, talking about a month or more, going from about the March the 13th to May. Oh, well, quite a while, and then finally it breaks out. And what I love to do in this particular pattern, uh, I really should speak to Chase Station at some point. I would love a line that I could take like this, like this, and all I all I want to do is to say, hey, if when you use up a lot of time going from the left side to the right side, and the technicals then start to strengthen considerably, not just a little bit, but it's strengthened considerably. Uh, I don't know if I can do this because I'm going to move the point, but I'll try my best. 
I like to say there's a chance that at some point this, this particular stock, I don't know if I think I've already moved it a little bit. Ah, oh, darn. I think I'm close, though. Yeah, I think I'm close. You can you can do a vertical test. It doesn't look, when you're trading at 45, to do this and say, you know what, this thing could go to the 72 to 75 area. You, you Look at this. You, you're absolutely out of your mind. But I've seen this so many times where it has this long arch formation, doesn't take out the left side low, but all the time, in this case, the 200 period moving average is flattening out. It's down. It hasn't really turned up, but it's really basically flat. And then all of a sudden, the technicals turn up. So now what you've done is you've done this one to one from the uh, horizontal axis to the vertical axis. And now what have we got? We haven't quite got to that level, but look at the nine period moving average. It looks so close to turning down over there that technically I, I have to, do, this is the only thing that I really struggle with. Do I put a down arrow? I've had to do that a couple of times now and then change it to a plus sign because it did make that peak D, uh, E or F and then turn down sharply. This one's doing the exact opposite. It's walking the nine period moving average, occasionally touching the 14. I like this very much. So G, K, O, S, uh, Glaucos, Glaucoma, Glaucos Corporation, there it is. In 1998, I like it very much. All I'm going to say to you is, look, because you asked me the question and you were actually prepared to get out or hold, I'm going to say, why don't you compromise? Why don't you, for your own sake, because you've done very nicely now, take it just a little bit off, compliment yourself, give yourself a treat, give yourself you know, the, the, the pleasure of saying, hey, that was really successful. I identified it. I analyzed it correctly. You can take a little bit off, keep your core, a big a chunk of your core position, and let it go. Then when it makes D, which will be just one penny above the, the candle with the the high, most recent high, that was about a week or so ago. On the 29th, it went to 71.86, made a tiny doji. This is called the Chapman Wave silent doji, either on the left side or the right side of a high of, of a peak or the left side or on the right side of a low a trough. And in this case, it said, well, I pulled back, but look how beautifully I'm holding. And even today, after two, three doji candles, I'm making a breakout to the upside. I like this very much. I would, I would, either you should take a little bit off to reward yourself, or you could do this. And this is probably what I would do right now. It depends on your position. But I'd probably say, you know what, I, because I was about to take it off at 70.90, just a little bit, why not let it run because it's a good day today? Why not let it run a little bit further to that leg D? And the moment, if it does, and it should do it in the next two days, go above 71.86 by one penny at 71.87, that's where you can take off and you've made an extra point. That's just one of the ways that I do it. But if you don't do that, I would also have maybe today's low of 70.07. I'd make that the stop if you're not going to get out now. So one tiny little bit is the reward. I would keep the call. And that's the daily chart. The weekly chart has something actually quite different. The weekly chart has gone almost vertically after that arch formation. The MACD strong, stochastic strong. The 9 is way above the 14. The price is way above the 9. And I think here it's saying, yeah, I might make that little extra pop to the 72s. But that's where I'd probably start to stall. I'm just saying probably, I don't know, because the stochastic's at 93. But that's what you look for. This is fantastic. I love this. The, the weekly chart, sorry, the daily chart is leading the weekly chart. The weekly chart is leading the monthly chart, which has gone peak A, peak B, and then it failed. It came all the way down and another A, B. That came down. So here we are. This is in A, B. This is in leg C to the upside in the monthly chart, also looking very strong. So I'm just going to put this in while we're doing it, and I'm thinking about it. It's called uh, Glaucos Corporation. G-L-A-U-K-O-S, core, and then ophthalmic uh, tech. Okay. Very nice. So congratulations, Ron. You've done very nicely. And even as we speak, somebody heard it and it just popped at a couple of cents. <laughs> okay, SWAV is the next question I had, SWAV. I said I'll look at the bonds in a moment. I'll get there. 
So I don't know if the question is just to look at it or whether you are looking to get in or you have it, um, Coda. So here's your question. Uh, let me see if I can actually go back to the question. And on the way back, as I'm scrolling, I have to congratulate Fletch. Great positioning and rig. You were just absolutely determined to hold on. You kept selling the whole den. The rig is doing well, and, and, and there's no rigor mortis there. It's acting beautifully. Uh, good morning, Prof. Suave, please. Took advantage of a pullback last week to the normal sum of 260s. Okay, really nice. You got in almost at the low after a move into the three three in the three teens, uh, about 317. Pulls back to 260, and here you are at 284. I love that action. The weekly chart is still very strong on the nine feet moving average. I'll be back in a moment. This is Shockwave Medical and Cardiovascular Medical. Plus, we're into the medical stuff this morning. Uh, Dow's up 183. So we'll be back in a Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019 finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Dan at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So let me just do this on SWAV. This is um, Shockwave Medical Inc. So what I like is grab the most obvious left sidebar. If I can go to the midpoint... And let me just do this right now. If I can go to the midpoint, and it's looking to me like there's a chance that you could have the same number of bars on the right side to the left, then I'll do what I've just done here. 
and I go click, I add that to the other side over there. All right, right there. Change the color because green is on the way up. Red is on the way down. And I try to get to a bar that is telling me on the left side that if I take that diagonal and I take it to where this, I don't want to move it to the right because then I'll see where it ends up. I should have the same number of bars coinciding with the diagonal going down to the base on the right side. So without doing, look, he has peak A, peak B, uh, peak C, he has your peak D. All right, put down arrow and let's see what happens. So this is what I was indicating to you. So this is going to go to the end of this bar. And look at that. Number of bars on the left. I mean, you couldn't be more perfect. This is a 120-minute chart. This is your midpoint. Here's your fulcrum or what I call the plumb line in the middle right here. So everything about this has become very mathematical. And, of course, being a technology company, a Shockwave Medical Inc., you want to be as precise as you can be. All right? So here we go. Left side, right side match. We go move that to the right. There we go. Right there. So that's a beautiful arch formation. So the chances are that it went under it and and now it's gapped. And I just see uh, Shockwave Medical Inc., latest stock news three days ago, Thursday's IBD stock of the day as SWAV, S-W-A-V, stock sort. I actually saw that. I completely forgot about it until I looked at it right now. But I did see it on Friday, I think it was. And now what it says, it's gone to where, look how important this 200 period moving average has been to the support. Now it's hit the resistance exactly on a pop to 285.72 from the low of about 261. I mean, that's, that's big stuff, up 21 points, up 8% today. So now the question is, you did get some. So the way, the way I would do it is I wouldn't rush to quickly get the next lot in. Let's see how the candle works because I think this market is starting to act uh, the way I've been talking about for some time, that with that nine period moving average and the daily chart of the key indices, even the SMHs, still strong, still holding beautifully. It's a process. If it's going to turn down, it's going to be a process. It's going to take a little while. And I thought the first week or two of July is basically where we're going to see what happens as it treated as strength to say, this is fantastic. This is another big move to the upside. Or what I am thinking is that there's a consolidate, just a consolidation. And it, it implies the daily charts are going to consolidate. They might not even affect very much the weekly. So this is the same thing that I'm looking at with the 120-minute chart here. Fabulous move up, just stalled right there at the 200 period moving average, which was support. Now probably going to be resistance. So I would say you got a fabulous entry. I would not push my luck. I wouldn't want to average in by getting in now at 283 and then have it pull back. And then all of a sudden, instead of a really good position that you had, even though it's your only your entry point, I would prefer for you to wait. So this, this is Monday. Let's look at it again Wednesday. If it pulls back and doesn't take out 278, the pink nine-period exponential moving average support in the next few days, but in fact, somehow or other between now, from this very minute we're talking at uh, 10.34 a.m. on the 10th of July, if it can make a new high either today or tomorrow, new high on the bar, that is, a uh, high of today is so for 285.72. If it can manage to go above that, preferably close above the high that it was that was made earlier this morning into the 286 area, then I'll say to you, you know what? Now on a little bit of a pullback, I'd have a split position of adding something else, but I wouldn't get the full second position. I'd just have a, a split position to have that as now the trading position and try to keep your 260s position as your core. That's what we try to do in, in my, my opening call, try to keep a core and just trade around some other things. That's what we do with the Dow. Haven't gone back into the long side of the Dow yet, even though it's holding well, because I think we're going to have some kind of a consolidation that lasts not much, so, maybe not so much in points, because we haven't had those minus 50 to minus 60 S&P uh, turndowns at the open and then at the uh, finishing at the low of the day at the close. That to me is bear market material. We've not had that. So anything else says that they'll be buying. So I want to see that unfold, and, and that'll include this medical ink. So if you look at the whole sector, I mean, look, Boston Scientific pull back. 
after a really good move to an all-time high, making an arch formation, peak A, peak B, peak C right there, holding beautifully in the weekly, but it looks like it's just making the oval. This could be a stalk leg formation, so I'm watching it closely. M MDT is... Uh, MDT is Medtronic, PLC, almost looks the same thing, but it didn't act anywhere close to as well as uh, Boston Scientific. It, it didn't get to the, the high was in the 130s. The low was down in the, in the 70s, and yet it is trading at 86, stuck to the 200 period exponential moving average. So just be a little careful there. There was one other, was, oh, TMO, I must add TMO, one of the great companies, Thermo Fisher, uh, same thing. Uh, it's got the same pattern. So you're in the one that's acting extremely well in this whole area. So that's Shockwave Medical. All right, next question came in. Where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, FXI. Can I look at the FXI? Why does the chart always do that? Uh, funny, FXI almost looks like those medical stocks. Um, it's having a, a, it's down 11 cents at 27.07, but you see the pink nine period moving average? Here's your dreaded H. One dreaded H that's so successful goes to like an M-shaped formation or even a larger H, and it took out the left side low. No, I think that these things are, are starting to stall. So let me just add a quick question. Could I, I don't know if it's a quick question. It was a question. Could I update my uh, one-minute uh, chart? Yes. So it went to, from that low that was made at, at Trough D at 9.30 this morning, um, we kept pulling back, pulling back, pulling back. We had a beautiful yesterday on Friday. You remember I showed you the arch formation. Oh, in fact, I, I did Tom show and I had this down and I said, there's a chance that by, this is the same technique I used a moment ago for, uh, was it, uh, what was the stock that I was looking at here? Uh, Ron, uh, oh, GKOS, Dark Horse. Um, yeah. That was the same technique. There's a one-minute chart. The other one I was looking at was, I think, a daily or weekly chart. Look at this. Left side, right side comes down, tests it, and holds, 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 and then breaks it, and then starts a big rally at about just before 9 o'clock, spikes up, pulls back, holds the left side, trough D, at about a 44.30 area, and then has a decent rally. Take, uh, sorry, takes it out a little later on to another D, then goes peak A, peak B, holds steady, and now I have to continue B because it didn't take out that low. So that becomes C. And we're always looking for at least a D in a buy mode. And this is a buy mode. So this goes C right here. That goes D right there. That goes E. Two doji candles. And so be careful. The unbalanced volume reversed sharply lower. The MACD turned down. And look what happened. You made this little cup. Oh, I, I, I like you. It's not technical Friday. But I'd like to, when I get back, I want to talk about this formation. It has become so familiar, especially with the E-mini. If you're an E-mini trader, get to know this pattern. This cup formation with the left side is the right side. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today 
and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hello, so the question came in. I'm not sure, just a courtesy. Nice run up in DKMG. That's DraftKings Inc. Sports betting. I mean, look at this. Beautiful. I keep saying to subscribers, we want to buy this and we want to buy it. And we just, it, it has these sudden sharp pullbacks. So if you recognize it a, a little late, you have to have a very wide stop. And at this point, I just don't really want to have wide stops. But I do like it going forward. So this makes it very difficult from 35 to two, uh, 25 to 28 uh, in just three days. Where do you actually get it? Anyway, I do like it. And everything about it is very strong. And that's a good sign. So I, I wanted to show you this. Look, you, for any of you who trade the futures, keep in mind, this is a pattern. But you see it you see it in the one-minute chart. You see it all the time. It's the cup formation. I call it, I used to call it the, well, um, I haven't actually used that expression for a long time. Uh, that is just, uh, it's like the backhoe. And it's got lifting up, uh, you know, all the grit to put into the back. And then, woof, it comes tumbling down. So you've got this U-shaped pattern. If you look at the left side, the technicals are great. You look at the right side, ooh, the technicals are weakening, but that nine is still over the 14 when suddenly it turns down. And that's exactly what's happened. Now the futures are only at 0 0.25. And that's what you've got to be careful. Peak G in the weekly, in the weekly, in the 10 minute chart. Now it's under the 200 period moving. You look how important the 200 period, like a sine wave, it goes under, then over, now under. So I think that this is this is exactly what I was talking about. The reason why I didn't want to get too carried away by going to the long side, unless I've got pullbacks and what we wanted, I'm prepared to wait for those pullbacks because that's what I'm looking at here. And within that context, I also wanted to point out that, look, I had a question. Where was it a moment ago? It wasn't this. It was the another. Oh, I did it too quickly. What was the stock I was scrolling down? Um... Was it was it SWAF? Did it also do the same thing? Uh, no. Oh, well, well, in a sense, it's got the cup formation, but that's not really what I'm talking about, a flat ball type formation. I'll, I'll find the stock in a moment. I wanted to show you the relationship of the, the one-minute chart to the a chart that I was looking at just a moment. I've just been looking at so many charts that I, I'm, I'm charted out. So I right, forget that. Question I had about FXI. Did I do that? FXI? Yeah, FXI is just in the lower range. It got repelled to the 200 period moving average, iShares, China, large cap, ETF. It just looks to me like it's stuck. Oh, talk about stuck. So the TLT kept trading in this rectangle formation and it went to the top of that, to the top of the range in the 109, 110 area a couple of months ago. And then it broke the midpoint of the rectangle. And that says to me, be careful because then it could test the left side low. Well, the left side low of importance is this lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m, and then a tiny little arch right there. 98.88 was the low in the TLT, the iShares 20 year Treasury Bond ETF, <clears throat> back in March, I think it was. Yep, March, the week of the third. And then what happened is it ran up back to the 0108s, and then this, the past two weeks, because we've got to include today, 
It's been coming back, coming back, wanting to test 98, 88, 98, bam, today it goes to 98, 85. That's the low so far. The day is young. Anything can happen. But that is important to me because if we take that out, you don't have much support on the left side. 91, 84 was the low back in, was that January or February? Oh, October, sorry, October of last year, we got the 28th. So I'm watching this closely. Why? Because you remember we looked at the TBT, and the TBT had made a leg D in the weekly chart. Now this has not tested its high. It's the inverse, ultra short Lehman 20 Treasury bond ETF. Um, but the 3rd of March, the week of the 3rd, 32.35, 32.75 was the high. And so far the high is 31.80. It's a point below it. But it's only in leg C. And that should go to a D. So yields, and uh, the statement made earlier was, uh, yeah, watch those yields. And what I say is, only when you need to watch whatever it is. Remember, I've got this thing called the dark news cloud cover. There's always bad news out there. It's when the market treats the bad news as bad news. Then you've got to be very careful. So this is the dark news cloud cover. This is the entire range of resistance for two years, uh, 11 22, a year and a half is over that. And that's the big resistance. So I say if the market now takes bond yields, treasury yields, T-net yields, as serious, that means you've got to be very careful. So yes, that means the TBT is starting to rally. But if you look at this chart here, oops, I just got a ring. Let me just see what that says. Bing! Uh, we've got William in Boca Raton. William, how are you? I'm um, well. I'm just getting over COVID, and uh, um, COVID. Boy, uh, oh, I'm sorry this, to hear that. This this new round, um, people don't realize how many people have got it. But yes, at any rate, um, wear your masks for a change. At any rate, um, now that I'm getting over it, um, I'm looking at Halliburton H A L. Yes. So, do you have a position in Halliburton? Yeah, it had quite a week last week, and so I'm not sure that, you know, I don't want to wait for a little correction or something, but, boy, it so took off last I, week. So, so, wait, did you did you say you have a position in this, or you're waiting to get no, it? I, no, I wish I had. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right. So we go, what we want to do is to look forward. The way it's spread, I did this on Friday. I'm not sure I actually annotated the whole thing on Friday because I did rig, I did... This I did slumberger. Um, so this is oil service. It's up 33 cents today, 35.91. When I did this work, I said over the over the weekend I was looking and I said I there's no other way I could count this as a G alternate count G slash B, but that MACD is strong. The stochastics flat at 86 percent. That's great. On balance volume is rallying. It's not overbought. It's rallying. The nine period moving average is strongly over the 14 period in the daily. The weekly, um, the weekly actually just at the close on Friday flipped to L, which means long on just that particular indicator, the nine over the 14. And I'm calling this a B because the, the way it may, I might be wrong, but the way it made this trough on the, um, tw I, the, the if you were watching this the speed that Halliburton moved from the 20, uh, let's call it 31 area. From the 31 area, just about eight sessions ago, nine sessions ago, to the breakout on Friday, away from the 200 period was really impressive. So this is what I'm going to do. I think about what, think about what, I, just how I'm going about telling you what I would do, um, and then make adjustments according to the number of shares or whatever it is. I like what's going on because it's going together with rig, which has done very well. Also, a little extended on the short term, but fabulous action breaking. Oh, that's what I want to look at. So the pattern we were looking at in the one minute chart is right here in the weekly chart of rig, where it's taken out the left side low. So the, the, the you didn't ask about that, but they kind of go together. This is the strongest one, Transocean. If rig can close above for two weeks, above the high that was made the week of the 10th, at 774 and it's trading at 793 right now, that'll be really good action. I'm mentioning that only because ha ha since it's kind of the leader in the group, even though it's the lower priced one, I think they're going to go together. 
and that goes together with the OIH. The OIH has had a nice break to the upside. I'm also calling this a leg E. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, yes, I would start nibbling, but when I get back, I'll give you the plan. I'll give you an outline of a plan that I would have at exactly this point. Is that okay? I look forward to it. Okay, I'll be back in a moment with William in Boca Raton, Dow's up 148, SMB's up 5. That's a Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Back. William, what, this is what I'm thinking. I would start a small position right here at 3587 because it's pushed so far away from the 200 period moving average of 3318. If at any point it goes in the next two days, it has to be speed we're looking at timing wise. So if it starts to trade under 3446, so that's a point I, I a point under where you get in right now or just a little bit more, I'd say, okay, just watch it closely. But I would start the position and if it does pull back if it takes two days, in other words, by Wednesday, if it actually starts to pull back into the 3440 area, if, in other words, if it quickly pulls back, then I'd say watch it closely. But if it takes its time and, in fact, it either goes higher or it pulls back, I would add a, I'd have a split position. The first one's right now in a second position, and this is all part of a half position that you're looking at overall because it has extended. I would be looking at adding at about 34. 40 if it was in the next day if it was by late Tuesday afternoon or Wednesday morning 
And then the overall thing, I'd have one position of that, I would have about a, about a two-point stop, just to give it some room. I like the action, but it is a little bit extended on the, on the daily chart. So I hope that helps you. Thank you very much. Good. And, uh, and I'll be following it tomorrow as well. So, folks, just as we're about to wrap up, if the Dow gives back a chunk today, if it goes, I mean, it was up uh, uh, over 200 points, if the Dow pulls back uh, between now and Tuesday afternoon or Wednesday morning and actually starts to slide, and this is what I'm thinking is a possibility, just in terms of saying that H pattern is, is I call it the dreaded H, for, there's a good reason for it. I think that 9 period moving average will slip down below and go pink in the next couple of days so if it takes out in the next few days if it takes out today's low of uh, let me see what that is of 33 uh, 705 in the next two days then I finally think it will go pink and the S&P if it gives back and goes minus 9 by later this afternoon that's 